So the main event of the week, comic book wise at DC, of course, is Dark Knight's Death Metal issue 2, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. And obviously this is kind of building the plan of uh, trying to essentially go into the other worlds to get the crisis energy or whatever from all these past crises. So we're, we're getting kind of that Back to the Future 2-esque, where the Justice League are going to go into you know, Crisis Infinite Earths and, and Final Crisis and Infinite Crisis, potentially. That's what it mm-hmm. sounds like anyway. And steal the energy so they can power up Wally Appreciate. West enough to yeah. take on Perpetua is basically the, the idea. So he he has Manhattan's power plus the chair, right? That's that's the, the crux of this. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah, yeah it seems okay. to be the case, yeah. Uh, so to go th- through this, although I'm on the wrong book, why I'm on Strange Adventures, that was, that's, that's next. God damn it. All right, so... Cool. Well, you know... Sometimes things don't go to plan. You know this. Uh, so, there's a bit of a joke opening here where an, uh, an Atom who's working for the, the, the evil about Batman. Him. The bat the Batom, yes. I was about to say that. Yes. He, he's uh, disguised as a lizard <laughs> in, in, the, in the grass. And he's he's talking on the comms and then he just goes splat. And there's like a, a bat monster truck has rolled over him. Uh, it it was it was an amusing little thing. Um, yeah. did you Ball love bastard. her? Did you love her hate the map on the on the credits page, Matt? That makes the shape of the bat symbol. <laughs> no, I like that. That was in the first issue too. I like that. Of course, if if the Batman who laughs did reshape Earth, of course it's going to be in the shape of in, the bat symbol in, in his image. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that, that, that makes sense. Yes. That checks out. So, uh, out of interest, okay. Matt. Obviously, we spoke about the credits last time yeah. Yeah, with the, the nicknames. Yep. Obviously, last time they were all songs, and I recognized uh, mm-hmm. a handful of them. Uh, Hallowed Be Thy Name, of course, was a prominent one. I think Snyder right. himself had that, uh, which is the, the Maiden song. Do you recognize what these ones are? Uh, no. I mean, I'm assuming these... they may be songs again, but I don't recognize them. Could be albums. Know... Yeah, well, they Could also be. just seem like metal things. Like, you know what I mean? Like God Killer, Fear Monger, The Tormentor. Do, but I know the last one were all songs. Yes. Because, like, yeah, let's say, Hallowed Be Thy Name, Painkillers, I think Judas Priest, I want to say. Uh, Seek and Destroy is a Metallica song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, uh, Crazy Train, Ozzy Osbourne, of course. Right. Uh, they, you know, they were all in the first one. Whereas this one, I don't recognize as much. So I'm wondering, are they getting yeah. more obscure as they go on, or is it just not songs this time? Yeah, I think that this one feels like they just gave them or let them pick one. Because look at Snyder's; it's just a bunch <laughs> of wingdings, you know. Yeah. And Greg, the chosen one, Capullo. Well, yeah. I, I took Snyder's as 96, then swear word. Not that the 96 was part of the swear word. Yeah. So I'd sure. go either way on 96, yeah. to be honest. It could be part of it or not. Because yeah. I, um, I, saw, I sort of read it as, uh, like, there's like a song called 96 Fs or something like that. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Uh, I just want to also point out that uh, Art Germ has, has both. So instead of, mm. you know, him being Stanley Art Germ Lau, it's Stanley Art Germ of Lamented Lau, mm. which... I just, I love the double nickname like that. But yeah. Uh, so um, we, we have our team from last issue, which is Wonder Woman, Wally, Swamp Thing, uh, going towards, uh, well, we, well, we didn't know where they were going last issue, of course, but no. they're going to this this crypt, this crypt of heroes that's secret and hidden underneath the uh, the Washington graveyard. And yep. they, they go in uh, and there's defenses, and obviously we see these green wolves and we're like, oh, wait, which lantern is it? There's a lantern down here. Um, yeah, no, that, that's Cerebus, who. Three-headed dog guards the guards gates the underworld. to yeah. the underworld. Yep, yep. So yeah, oh, like, oh. I'll be honest, it never even occurred to me they were connected. I, I just, I just yeah, thought I saw three wolves. Man, You're not a mythology guy. Yeah. yeah. I, I just, I thought I saw three wolves. Uh, I, I, I literally started reading the the Odyssey yesterday. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting really into the thick of it there. You, you read sure. the old, like the Homeric prose of it? It's a translation by Emily okay. Wilson. Gotcha. Um, but I'm, I, I, honestly, there was like a a huge, massive introduction and translator's notes before that I read that were really interesting. Well, you, should, you should stop right now, though, because Tim's going to translate it all, and you want to read his translation. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I tweeted about this, and Tim was like, why aren't I reading his version? I went, well, mate, if you translate the ancient Greek, I'll read it, I swear. <laughs> Tim, Tim's learning Greek as we speak. Uh, oh, so... no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> so, of course, it's actually uh, Alan Scott. It's, uh, it's the JSC yep. that are down here. Uh, we see like a really old-looking uh, Jay and Wildcat. Uh, obviously, Fate's there. I can't tell if Fate's old, though, because <laughs> he's I got mean, a helmet. I'm sure he is. 
Um, but, you know, I, I did love uh, Wally saying, you remember me, Jay? And he's like, I'll never forget again, kid. And, you know, it, it looks like there's a tear in Wally's cheek. It, it, it's kind of, it's from the side, so it's not as obvious, but I think there is. Uh, it breaks my heart. It really does. Or it warms my heart. It warms it and breaks it over and over. Uh, Batman's with Jonah Hex, and he's basically said, okay, what is this power? What is this person's power have? And they're t- it's basically, they're talking about the Freedom Fighters for the most part. Um, yeah, they have the Freedom Fighters and some of the JSA. Yeah, Wesley Dawes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and he's basically yeah. like, okay, recruit everyone. Yeah, we'll take them all. We have to get everyone. And Batman's still operating under this idea that he wants to just win the small fight because he can't. He doesn't believe they can win some gargantuan multiverse fight that can reshape everything and bring everything back. But and Wonder Woman he fails. And he doesn't believe. <laughs> all right, Matt. All right. From the book of Yoda. <laughs> he's uh, this anti-Matt agenda, which is somehow also a Star Wars reference. Uh, everything I hate about the world. Yeah. Uh, so. Wonder Woman basically convinced him, saying, no, we've got this idea. Uh, basically, everything that's happened, we've resulted in this world that we've cre- that this has been created by the Batman Who Laughs. And she explains the plan to Batman. So, it, it, again, so even though it was kind of hinted at last issue, it made it very clear here that they're going to go into these, you know, these dark multiverses of these previous crises and basically try and... Super- Harvest the energy. Yeah, power yeah. up Wally so that he can take on Perpetua. So... So it's not about fixing it back to the future style or back to the future two style, I should say. It's no. just them going in and in interceding just yeah. enough. To yeah, they're going to let the crises happen. Still, Play out. Yeah, they're, they're not, not right. like trying to prevent. Yeah, they're not right. changing the timelines. They're they're just there to harness the the energy of the crisis themselves. Uh, you know, and, how... and theoretically, I can only assume. By the end of this, start their own crisis in some yeah. way. Well, no, to, the anti-crisis. The anti-crisis. The well, the an- the anti- yeah, sure, yes. but to reset the world in the image they believe it should be in. Yes, an infinite uh, multiverse, as they, they I think has mentioned multiple times here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and even Barry shows up. You know, uh, he's been running around. Mm-hmm. The, the speed force has been depleting though, so he's, he's the energy's yeah. running running out. Uh, and he's like, I hope this was worth stopping for. And then they explain the plan. He's like, you know what? Yeah, that does kind of sound like. It was mm-hmm. worth uh, and, and and he has a a moment with the others, and it's a triple flash hug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good stuff. Uh, uh, the plan, although before they get to the multiverse stuff uh, or the, the crisis stuff, is they have to go and get whoever's left uh, from New Apocalypse. They have to go get Superman and whoever else is there. I, I love how Batman just says the next step is and then when he doesn't even mention anything else to Barry. He's just like and then when. <laughs> that's that's so Batman. Just, <laughs> just eyes on the goal. I love it. Uh, but we cut then to Castle Bat. And, I mean, I'm a little bit annoyed that there's still technically Batman Who Laughs, because I really was hoping that he was truly dead. I mean, to be honest, only temporarily. <clears throat> well, he's still kind of a version of the Batman Who Laughs. I mean, at, at I, first, but I when, once, like... he, once he shifts, I would say, not really. It's still him. It still comes from him. I don't, I don't like this. <laughs> but let, me, let me explain what happens then for the context, yeah. then Matt can go Matt, all Matt on it. Is yeah. They put... They put Batman Who Laughs brain into a Bruce Wayne from an Earth where Bruce Wayne became Doctor Manhattan. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming this is in the same sense that that Wally West kind of became Manhattan. Yeah, very possibly. Yeah, like it was more like that rather than yeah, straight. He was, he was there, John Ostrander. Yeah, he was the original Manhattan. Yes, uh, and he gets up and he's kind of like a d- demented looking Doctor Manhattan. He then uses the Manhattan powers to just uh, the the, the Bat Rex, the B Rex. And he just kind of like makes them disintegrate with his powers, Manhattan mm-hmm. style, uh, and then does it to everyone else eventually in the scene. And then he forms into a Batman who laughs, but blue, like Manhattan, and he has the, the Manhattan style text. Uh, well, he has the Manhattan style of bubbles, but the font is very much Batman who laughs still. Right. Uh, which I actually the... really like that touch. It's a lot more readable on the blue background. Well, that, that's actually True. why I like it, is it's easier to read. I hated the red on the black. It was just a pain to read. Yeah. So I'm okay with that. Um, and... Yeah, basically, yeah, everything's fine, you're Perpetua. Because like, he basically, Perpetua kind of checks in and makes sure everything's going okay. He's like, yeah. Like, oh, it. I got this. Yeah. Uh, I technically did get die, but, you know, now I'm now I'm like back and I'm, you know, all this. So he basically takes a new final form. He transforms after killing the rest of the, the Batman in the room. He mm-hmm. makes them all disintegrate. I, I love the visual of this, actually, like the, the, the floating eye and just the parts. It, re- it reminds me of uh, something you get in, like, a Doom Patrol comic. Uh, I was going to say, first of all, Morrison. Yeah, which, yeah. You know, yeah. I think is a, a reasonable point of comparison there. But he becomes the darkest knight because he's aware that you know Diana and that are making some kind of play. 
So he has to sort of counterplay in order to fight back. Well, the length of the years. <laughs> so he becomes this just this complete pitch black shadow uh, with the long bat ears, and he's the darkest knight. So yeah. but, yeah, that's what we needed. We needed a Batman who became Joker, and now we need a Batman Joker that's omnipotent. Great. <laughs> And and that's why I say this isn't really just the Batman who laughs. The way this final transformation is makes it feel different, at least to me. That's I not mean, him. You guys have filtered. This. It's it's him in in a way, but it's different. It's not no, just. No, it's him on steroids now. Yeah, it's him with a, a new image. That's it. Yeah, that's enough to make it different. I mean, he's scarier than he's ever been, right? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm like, not even, I'm not even saying I dislike that where this goes. I, I rolled my eyes a little bit when I realized that there was going to be so. Because see, when he first popped back up and he, he reformed into the shape of uh, I, I, Batman, I rolled my eyes too. Yeah, right. I wasn't really feeling okay. that so much, but when it got to the you know the ending here, I was like, okay, you know what? Clearly, this is the end game of this character. We're not. There's going to be a round after, so it better not be. Snyder, DC, and, I'm telling you and, right now. This is the version that's on that cover in the solicits that we just talked yeah. about. That yeah. I thought it was a phenomenal cover. So, uh, but I do like the art here. I like the, the horror approach of it. No, oh, yeah, it's, it's it's ghastly. And like he makes... The wisps, the wisps of the shadow coming off it. Uh, really uh-huh. make- and he makes uh, the Robin that's left here, the, the Robin King, which obviously ties into that one shot with the, the, the Riley Rosmo art that we're going to be getting uh, in a few months. So, that's there. I like I like how the he goes crow. Hmm? Yeah. So it goes from crow to crown. Yeah, that was a nice touch. I feel like that's one that works in the comic, but it would be really hard to do if they've never like adapt yeah, this into a movie or something. Like how yeah. do you say that out loud and it, make it, it work? It only works when you read it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so then we cut back to the others. Uh they're going across the Arkham Wasteland, which I'm okay with that title. Uh I like yeah. it. Yeah. Uh and what is, what is that bike Batman's riding with the, the, the bone? What is that skeleton? It, it, it's it's the bat skeletal bike. That's what we've seen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but what exactly? It looks like it's man bat's head. That's kinda, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That's kinda. Uh, I like how Dan is using Swamp Thing as a shield. I yeah. That's a nice touch. And, and they're riding Harley's hyenas. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then we find all the uh, the evil Batman from, from you know, the first metal, uh, but it's yeah. not really them. They're actually just kind of like Batman's like, like automated guards for this, this mm-hmm. base that he's got. Um, yeah, robots built by Toy Master. By Toy Master, who of course built the, the the Justice League Megazord uh, from yes. the start of Metal, which it reminded us of in the text, which was nice. Um, and the end of the issue is that they're going to get to New Apocalypse. They're, obviously, they have to get there, right? How do they get there? So the team. So again, this team. Now the GSA aren't with them. They're still back guarding everything. They're probably protecting Molly uh, essentially back at the the, mm-hmm. the secret crypt. Uh, but we have you know the elves here, and how are they going to get to New Apocalypse? They're going to ride a giant rocket, which is a basically a human-shaped rocket, which is a combination of Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, and it is the weirdest goddamn thing. It's, this is it's the Trinity a composite, design, right? Yeah. Oh, and yeah. So both say that again because you talked over each other. I couldn't uh, make out. Uh, you go first, Connor. <laughs> I just said this is such an incredibly Toy Master design. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, we used to have the the Batman Superman composite rocket. Yes. Right, that was from Jeff Loeb's uh, run. Do you, know th- Do you know what I think doesn't work about this? Is that the red lips just make it look more Joker esque than it does Wonder Woman esque to me? Sure. I can see where you're coming from there. Yeah. That's, that's what, I mean, obviously, the, the headband part and the W on the, the, mm-hmm. the, the belt and what. I'm obviously, it's, that's it's all fine. to kind of yeah. present yeah. Wonder Woman. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it, I do like how the, it is the Trinity composite yeah. now. Yeah, and, so. and also, I just like the idea we have to tie a man on retainer to build these giant bikes now. Yeah. yeah, that, I, I, That's just cool. I am terrified of how much this thing costs to build. Like, you know, how much money did Bruce give him to, to do this? I, you can't think exact, about that. Exactly the correct amount. <laughs> yeah. Toy Man definitely didn't skim a single cent off the top. This is at least $40 million. I'm just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's gargantuan. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yes. Uh, so I like how it doesn't have hands. Well, no. there's rockets, more rockets coming yeah, from know, the hands. But that, that was my favorite touch. Is that there's no hands. It's just it's just rocket fast. Yeah, obviously the, there's less introduced in this issue to really like sort of like get wacky with the speculation like the first one because the first yeah. one introduced Wally, introduced the whole concept. Uh, this just sort of really sets up what the plan is, convinces, puts the main team together at least for now. Obviously, once they get Superman and whoever else, they'll have a bigger team. But 
it really puts things in perspective and place sets up sort of what uh the batman who laughs is becoming i thought it flowed really well and uh it was an easy read actually so which i don't always really? say about a snyder comic so i think that's notable yeah i think there was only really one page of exposition like you know snyder exposition yeah. i would say it was the page near the start with uh when we're in the underground with batman and he's talking to mm-hmm. wonder woman and there was the page with like manhattan on it and the trinity at the bottom and even by snyder's standards the exposition was and i felt that some of that was a nice summary of where we are right now because it, you know we're in such a complex like status quo in this book you do need mm-hmm. to do these things a yeah. little bit yeah um it, it wasn't overly done or, you know just no. that was the most it got um I, honestly i thought this was a really fun issue uh you know with what it was doing my biggest complaint well I say complaint is i i felt the lack of following up on the lobo tease from last issue yeah sure yeah I'll be honest, I'd forgotten about it until you just said it, so... Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I was waiting for it all issue. I was like, we've got to follow on it. What, what did he find? And then I'm right. like, god damn it, another another well, issue without knowing? I've got to wait uh-huh. until next time? No, and... Also, he was a variant cover, you know, oh, too. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, uh, and... You were kind of like, oh, maybe there'll be more, but, you know, I just, there wasn't a lot going on, and it, it's hard to slight it for moving the story. You know what I mean? So it was just, it was a weird read because when i got to the end of it i expected more just because where it leaves off no i get where you come from there's barely anything to actually fault in what it does wrong right it's just that it's so quick and it feels like it doesn't Mm -hmm. advance the plot that Uh, much uh, that uh, you're like where's the rest especially after the last issue which was really dead right but i actually appreciate this because one of my complaints with snyder is that everything has to be 100 miles per hour you know every page and i feel like no i I need it to still this this makes me settle into the premise a lot better where i feel like i really understand everything what their goal is what they're doing uh i think it, the I think character beats pacing whiplash more than anything after after the last issue which was yeah. so dense had so much i think it had extra pages or i could be mm. wrong on that um and you know it felt like i think i remember saying last time there was a point where i thought it was going to be the end of the issue and then it kept going with another section whereas this issue just ends where where i expected it to really you know well, by yeah. the time i got to the end i didn't feel like there was more to come um but it feels really quick because of that um but it's really fun i really like everything that's in it it's a it's a blast to read yeah yeah i can't again i can't fault it there's nothing actually wrong it just it feels like in a vacuum it's it's damn good but after following up this just feels like we're hitting the jsa beats right and we're hitting the mission beats um but yeah and matt, I, matt actually I sounds the most down in this which is surprising it, to me but it was good it's you know what i mean yeah. i just uh, the the darkest night left a bad taste in my mouth sure. <laughs> that's it like it, sure. i got there massive eye roll but like the whole batam thing being introduced in the so lizard suit <laughs> just to have him ran over like that was almost something out of a tom taylor yeah um it was yeah, you're right yeah right so like hey maybe snyder's reading some taylor books and getting some inspiration that's maybe can only help but, him like i I love that <laughs> opening because it's like hey there's a lizard and it's standing up and then it unzips and i was like oh hey it's the atom and then i realized it's the bottom yeah and i was like so and then yeah. and then he's gone i was like god damn it what a page what, yeah. all of that and in just, the space of a page and it just kind of drops you into the beginning you know what i mean like uh, uh, from from how we left off with the last one to yeah. hear you're, you're just moving automatically and it's like connor said it is a bit of a whiplash what? So. so if we get to some speculation here because i think what we really have to sum up here is that so we've got multiple books ending in october we've already ended a couple before october we have a you know a holding pattern on the flash and in this book while we were speculating beforehand between the first issue bringing in wally and in this issue fly was saying that we're going to build a multiverse that's infinite uh, you know, that's what the goal is of this story. That we're definitely doing some kind of soft relaunch or reboot. Uh, and not that I, ex- I mean, for the most part, all I really expect is to set up a proper status quo that's not wonky and maybe get some new creative teams on stuff. But yeah, I mean, there might be a couple of little tweaks in yeah. the universe here or there. Yeah, you know, that's usually what we do with these. And reboots. it's worth I don't mention- expect it to be exactly what we had before. And it's worth mentioning the the, the the Wonder Woman and Jay interaction here definitely feels like this is the Wonder Woman who appeared and worked with the JSA in her origin. In, they have in that history. Snyder story. Yeah, and that Snyder yeah. story, yeah. So yeah. as much as Generations isn't happening anymore, that is still feeding into something. So honestly, Snyder's still my, you know, num- not my maybe my favorite pick, but he's my number one expected pick for JSA at this point. 
Yeah. So right. you know what though, if if they well, because like, and Tynan doing that story in Green Lantern too, and mm-hmm. they're so close. You know what I mean? Like I'm sure that story. If if Snyder is doing JSA, I could see them talking about it and be like, "Hey, do oh, you think you could definitely. pull this off?" Yeah. You know what I mean? I, and um, honestly, and my, my... I know Snyder's not everyone's favorite. Uh, no. Even even amongst just the three of us, but, but, but he's earned this shot at the the crisis, so to speak. Right? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, to to be fair, like I like I've liked everything he's done with the GSA so far, which has not been a lot. It's been one short story and then an interaction here. But yeah. I'm actually like I, I'm expecting February to have a GSA issue one by Scott Snyder, and I'm actually looking forward to it. I'm excited by the prospect of him if, doing a GSA book. If he's doing a GSA that's rooted back in the past. And it, it is spinning out of that Wonder Woman story, and she is the first hero and whatnot. My favorite American vampire story of his is set during World War II. And it does like it gets dark because it's vampire and monster and stuff, mm-hmm. but it's not the typical Snyder darkness. It I can, think it, it can yeah, be he can do, a nice change of pace. He can do pulp, and I think the other thing is that being a GSA book instead of a Justice League book, my hope would be, and I expect him to, is to stay away from apocalyptic multiverse shenanigans yeah, it, for a while. It takes some of the pressure off, doesn't yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think in terms of just the continuity of it, uh, as much as we're not doing generations anymore, Wonder Woman is pretty long-lived, and it's perfectly plausible I, that we can still we can still play... Oh, she was around in the 40s or 50s, if, whenever we're yeah. saying this book. Yeah, that'll, be, that'll be one of the, the, the changes that this, the end of Metal will solidify. It's like, okay. and, I'm, and, and it's and perfectly as, plausible we can do that without resetting everything and, you know, and, and making the whole generations thing a, a thing. But it does yeah, make like, me wonder what other, like, you know, if they've got a list to say just a half dozen things they want to fix or correct for this, like, what, what are the other things they're going to do? You know? Yeah. Yeah, like, another Superman fan, his whole thing is he was the first superhero. I'm okay with losing that to Wonder Woman, you know, and the JSA. Like, why, they were out there for one or two. Why I really don't mind it, though, is because Doomsday clocks up as the metaverse in that. Yeah. Even if Superman's not the first hero in the story, it, do- it right. doesn't really matter. Because no, no, but... he always is, regardless. It is a right, feedback. But if... Right, you're right, but I'm talking in in continuity of the DCU, right? Where, where, when John's relaunched uh, with New Fifty Two, and they had he had tried to make it all wonky with Batman was operating in in Gotham, but he was kind of more of an urban legend, yeah, you know. And, and Wonder Woman was around, but not really. But Superman was like the first public hero, but also Green Lantern was in. in it was all kind of he was trying to have his cake and eat it too. But if this streamlines it, like we had the JSA, and then the JSA kind of gives precedent to yeah, Batman I mean, and Superman down the line. We've had it in the past where the JSA Perfect. came first. Yeah. Right. Superman, and I think we're and all like kind of that. okay with that, right? Well, yeah, I, mean, I, like... I, mean, I mean, that's post-crisis, right? And we all love that era, so it's not mm-hmm. like we're alien to that idea of them existing yeah. first. And, yeah, and I just I also love the idea of, of what I mean, John said in Tuesday I... Clock with, with the Justice League leads to Superman, then the well, Superman leads to... I mean, to correct, yeah, what, in, to, in, to, I would to, argue, in to, current continuity, we have the JSA first. The, just people yeah. don't remember it because of what happened in Snyder's... Sure, sure. I, just, I, I want to correct something I just said. There. I said that was post-crisis. Technically, that's not true. Uh, because post-crisis, right. uh, Superman was billed as the first hero. It, it was later on the JSA got weaved back into it. it I don't know, fixed it. I, yes. don't know if that, I don't know if that was Zero Hour or something else, but the point is is that it was... But the, yeah, because in Zero Hour, the, it was, I think it was Zero Hour, they, they revealed like they had made a deal to make everybody forget them. Because yeah. of the McCarthy yeah. era type stuff, technically part of the post-crisis era, just not in a immediate. Yeah. Post-crisis well, I just wanted to correct before someone got right. snooty. And this yeah. is why people hate continuity, and I don't blame them. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, as a uh, history nerd and someone that loves mythology, I can keep it all straight. Like, yeah, we're gonna have to talk it out for five minutes, but we, we can all oh, come to consensus. Oh, I get you know it. I mean? well, I'm, I'm reading this week's Aquaman, and there's like completely like different mythologies mashed together, like from you know, like some Greek mythology, and then mm-hmm. you've got like Lovecraft mythology thrown in mm-hmm. all in the same issue. I'm like, I'm, I'm in for it. I'm, I'm, I'm dissecting it as I read and yeah. see Dagon and Nereus at the same time. Don't be wrong. Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, I'm in for it. All right. Well. Yeah. So. Yeah. So uh, I expect a, a launch of new books to follow uh, Death Metal issue two, and some continuity things to be molded as what some of the new creative directions are going to take advantage of. Uh, whatever they may be. 
And, you know, I would hope that this will lead to a new Batgirl book, which might be a different Batgirl. And the fact that we're yeah. even teasing Cass in the Batgirl suit is kind of cool. cool. And I'm okay yeah. if it's an entirely new Batgirl that we don't know yet. Like, if they just throw in a whole new one. But I wouldn't necessarily I'm hate that. I'm also okay with multiple Batgirls, because we've had multiple Robins. Oh, sure. Why not? Like, oh. yeah. I'm always I'm always on board, but I mean, hell, who for all we know, like, we could get to post death metal, uh, you know, issue seven, and or six, whatever it is, uh, I think it's seven. Uh, and it'll turn out to be like, oh wait, Barbara Gordon's Oracle again, like you know, we're, you know, maybe that's that could be something they want to change. As much as I, I mean, love Babs as Batgirl, I do miss her as Oracle, and she doesn't even have to be in the wheelchair. I just I miss her being like a leader type. That's, I do as well. She doesn't have to be in the field, you know. No, she I mean, be... I, we don't have to like speculate. It was just as just an example. It's just something they no. might want to change back. Well, that's, I, know. I think that's a key example where we're all pretty much used to Babs as Oracle, and it won't feel like a step back because no. it gives us still Babs stories and someone else at the same time. In well, Babs, it won't feel like. Have someone you know we have to replace her. it won't feel like a step back because when they they, they, they retconned the, the or i mean retconned maybe a weird word but when the new 52 came and they did sort of like fixed her it's right you know to use a, a, a really mm-hmm. sort of uh, it's, just, a, it's a it's a strange term yeah and it's, 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 kind of, it's, kind of, it's kind of an insensitive term is paralysis. the sense i was looking for right because she wasn't she wasn't broken is what pete's getting at in that though she wasn't back girl so I don't think he meant fixed as in yeah, yeah. paralyzed. But to, he meant fixed as returned her to yes. her original. But the point so I'm making. But my point I'm yeah. making is that when they did that, that didn't feel like it was the the natural order of things. That felt like much like in the way that we're kind of like John was trying to shoehorn Barry back into being the Flash when everyone was like right. on board with Wally for so long. It felt like that was stepping backwards bizarrely, even though. Admittedly, Batgirl, Barbara Gordon never really quite got a big Batgirl run of her, of her own because no. her appearances before Killing Joke were all, they were all guest appearances in Detective Comics or Batman or whatever. She never got the limelight the way that Cass and, and then Steph did. Didn't, and didn't there, there Cass been... have the first Batgirl book? Yeah. 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 And, so and I, I would say the majority of the past you know, 10-ish years of Batgirl have been solid. And yeah. I'm, I'm glad they exist for the most part. Um, yeah, I, I haven't loved all of it, don't get me wrong, but it's mostly been good and readable. Yeah, there's been depths, like, but... When it comes to DC, I love the idea of legacy, so I love the idea that you can pass on and become a new character in that, you know, Robin became Nightwing, and it still doesn't mean that he wasn't Robin, or, you know, yeah, he's a new we, we like that he's moving a new... forward. He's yeah. scared. And same with Oracle, I like that she went from oh no, I got paralyzed, what am I going to do? I'm not going to stop being who I am. I'll become a broker of information for the superheroes. And she became her whole, a whole new, you know, character, and you had Birds of Prey, and that's where she really got to shine. And she showed up in issues of Nightwing too, right? Like, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, so I, I just like the idea of legacy, and if we can move on and and have new characters, it's what I loved about DC I, I'm from sure the start. we've spoken about this in one of our "Quote unquote anniversary episodes." Mm-hmm. Sure, his legacy is kind of all of our favorite thing about DC, yeah. right? Which is it, funny it, it, because it's over Marvel specifically, <laughs> yeah. if we have to pick. Yeah. Which is funny because it was the, the one thing Dan Didio seemed to hate <laughs> about right. DC. Right, and that's well. And then you look at a lot of the stuff that this seems to be in doing. It's a lot of that stuff. It's a lot of you know, Joker War is now fixing Dick Grayson for for all of his problems, yeah. and we're getting Wally West back here. And you know, I mean, Death Metal is. I mean, it's it's got Wally West here. I mean, a different Wally West to what right. we are used to, but it's it is Wally West. We're bringing right. back the JSA, in again in a different form, but it feels yeah. like no, this is building to a natural place for this story specifically mm. and bringing them right. back into the universe. And again, it's easy to vilify Didio, but I understand where he's coming from. Where New Fifty Two is meant to generate those new readers, right? Now those new readers have been reading for so long, if they've if they've stuck with it. If someone started at the New 52, they've been reading comics for nearly a decade now. Right. So he did his job, and that's fine, and now it's time to let's... Which is funny, because I've, sa- I've said this you actually know? before, but like I still sometimes think of myself as a relatively new reader, and then I realize, wait, I've been reading since 2005. <laughs> it's been yeah. 15 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like- think that is part of how comics constantly call back, and maybe to yeah. a fault, to be fair. Yeah. 
they call back to stories from the early to mid 2000s all the time still and like, i mean even further back like i mean just batman last week was calling back to year one right yeah so it makes us who didn't read year one as it came out feel like quote again quote unquote new readers right. even right. though we're really i mean we've been doing this goddamn podcast for nearly five years yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we're you know we're so we're at this this place, so I it's this it's just you know, so we're expecting some kind of relaunch, is ultimately the point. I mean that led yeah. into that spiral yeah, conversation. And, and I don't think you you cancel, you know, Batgirl without this or or in Kelly Sue's run on Aquaman. I with, can't remember the last time we didn't have a Batgirl comic on uh, no. well the last well I can tell you the last time I mean with the exception of maybe a small gap between the, the cast and Steph mm-hmm. stuff, I mean there's been basically been a Batgirl ongoing since the early two thousands. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. It, it would be a crying shame if this was just the end of her having a consistent book because they've decided that she's finally not selling and enough. I don't see that happening because while she's not a you know bestseller like top twenty even, um, I think she sells consistently and reasonably well that they'd want a Batgirl book. The the idea, I mean, even Gail Simone was tweeting going, "I can't mm-hmm. see them not relaunching um, Batgirl," and and you know, again she was like, "No." specify no inside information she doesn't know right. what yeah. their plans are but the but, idea of them not relaunching bad girls I mean, seems to, unfathomable. To, throw, to just throw like a negative little point on this though yeah. is that it's shocking to me just how infrequent having a regular green arrow comic actually is because we don't have one yeah. right now and obviously we had one for most of the new 52 maybe all the new 52 and we've had one for a long mm-hmm. time in rebirth but it's been a while now since that book ended and before Brightest Day, when he was dead, there was just no, there was just no Green Arrow coming for a while. Like it was just not About there. Five years or so. Yeah, like there's been large periods of time where there's been no. And you think no, of Green Arrow as being was... one of the, you think of him as being one of the bigger B tier heroes, right? Um, so Batgirl's well, actually had more consistent success as a single comic than Green Arrow has, which is interesting. Well, no, he has, but no, there has been a Green Arrow book. It was just Connor Hawk, or. They did do the, the Black Black Canary and Green Arrow book when they got married. Uh, I think we're specifically talking about Solo Green Arrow here. Gotcha. Yeah, because because there wasn't gotcha. one before. There there was one right before the New Fifty Two because there was one that came out of Brightest Day for like maybe twelve issues or something like that. Uh, yeah, he, but he before was in the that, forest yeah, he was essentially that, on a JT I think, I think you had two fun. or three years without a Solo Green Arrow book. Yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah, think, uh, yeah, yeah. So and obviously, yeah. like, how long does Shazam go without a book? So I mean. But the worry, I guess, is that Batgirl is going to become one of those characters who gets like a twelve to fifteen issue book every yeah. f- every few years as a try, I mean, but never sticks around again. On Shazam, I know they're relaunch. Well, not relaunch. They they launched or are launching a digital comic with mm-hmm. Shazam. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, uh, I think it was Venditti is doing more Superman on that digital first uh, Man of Tomorrow, and that's not. That's not reprints from the the Walmart ones. This is new stories that they're just kind of oh we're into new content now. Um, that that Venditti is doing more of, and I think there is a Shazam one that just started last week. That was it might have been Dan Jurgens, someone like that who's doing it. So that 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 the, 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 there is content coming out, just not in the traditional format. Yeah. Uh. So I don't know. I, I guess that's the worry with some of these books being cancelled. I mean, I mean, I'm not really. I mean, Batman the Outsiders, it's obviously it's less about Batman. There's always going to be Batman, but it's more just the other characters and where they're going to end up. Yeah. But of course, Cass has been teased for things, so hopefully uh, something comes of that stuff. Uh, but yeah, just to sort of whip this back around and rate Death Metal Issue 2, which uh, I thought was a very solid issue, uh, setting things up and uh, keeping us excited for all the stuff that it's doing. Uh, Matt, what are you going to give the issue? Um, I'm going to give it a solid 8. Connor? Uh, 8.5 from me. I'll agree with 8.5. Uh, so there you go. That's uh, Death Metal Issue 2.